Callisto Protocol is a horror action game developed by Striking Distance Studios and published by Kraft and Inc. in 2022. This is seen as the spiritual successor to the Dead Space series. Striking Distance is led by Glenn Schofield, the executive producer of the original Dead Space, except this time he's in the director's seat. Now, I like Uncle Glenn. Going back to watching some behind the scenes videos and interviews on Dead Space, you can see how passionate he is about horror and how thought out the way he uses the horror elements in movies and life in games is. I believe in Uncle Glenn, so I bought the deluxe edition of Callisto Protocol and uh... Well, I still believe in Uncle Glenn, but the rest of the team? Not as much. The graphics, the atmosphere, the audio design is all fantastic. The lighting is so on point. Everything looks near photorealistic. It's quite the achievement. The monsters look pimply and gross and those tentacles too. It's got that haunted fleshy wall aesthetic like in Dead Space with alien eggs and shit. It's gross, it's moody, what more can you ask for? Well, the performance could be better. This game ran like ass cheeks when it first launched due to shader compilation stutters. That's been fixed, but performance overall is still inconsistent. There are areas where the frames drop for no reason, like in the tram area or the ladder before the sewers. I played the game with high and medium settings with FSR quality mode on, but the performance didn't change in those areas. It's fine most of the time though, so it's not the worst thing in the world, but it's not ideal. Overall the game looks great, but not the most optimized. Callisto Protocol is a linear action game with the occasional side paths to explore. The combat consists of using your stun baton, guns, and grip. Basically, it's the same routine of comboing an enemy and blast them with a gun at the end. And if there are spike walls nearby, you can use your grip to throw enemies into them. It looks flashy, gory, and sounds crunchy, but not enough to carry the whole game in my opinion. Melee feels like a turn-based game. After your combo, you have to wait for the enemy's combo to end first before you can go back in for more damage. If you go in even a second too early, you're gonna take some damage. You have no choice but to go at the enemy's pace. I guess you can use your guns, but ammo is not plentiful so melee is the main way to go. Every encounter feels the same. Some guys come after you, you hit them a few times, then you shoot their tentacles. Dodging feels way too simple. So what you do is hold left or right, alternating between the two to dodge, with down being block. There's no timing involved, like dodging at the right time for iframes. You just hold a direction and when an attack comes, you automatically dodge. There's not even a need to dodge in a specific direction depending on which way the enemy attacks. Like if a guy attacks from the left, you should dodge left because if you go right, you'll get hit. It's more simple than punch out on the NES and that shouldn't be happening in games today. There seems to be a lot of enemy types, but they're not that significantly different to fight. They're the regular guys, regular guys that spit, explody guys, invisible guys that you have to wait to show up to hit, deaf guys that you can stealth around, all of which would be faster to take down if you just whoop their asses. Some sections, you have to take the stealth route, but most of the time you can go all in and you'll be fine. There are a total of 5 guns in a game, but two of them, the skunk gun and tactical pistol, feel redundant as the hand cannon and ride shot can do their jobs just as well. Remember how in Dead Space you get like 4 to 5 different armor suits to show your progress in the game? Well here, you get the prisoner uniform and the armored suit. That's it. I don't want to compare this to Dead Space, but it's hard not to. Both are sci-fi horror games from Uncle Glenn. Both have dismemberment mechanics, a weapon upgrade system with alternate firing modes, upgrading your armor gives you more storage space, no HUD with the health bar on the character, and the story is about aliens taking over humans and transforming them. Callisto Protocol is objectively a lesser experience compared to Dead Space. Dead Space has way more weapons with little redundancy and more armors to get which leads to more upgrades to obtain, meaning more reasons to replay the game. Also, the enemy variety is just way better. Uncle Glenn brought the horror and atmosphere, but it looks like the gameplay people then put as much effort into this, and unfortunately, this is a video game and the gameplay part should be the main dish, not the graphics. It's flashy, but at what cost? There are a couple of sections where the jump scares occur way too often. There's a section where this head with a long neck wanting to deep throat your cock bursting out of his sack. 
Also, there's this bug thing that pops out of lockers and chest to kiss you on the lips. In those sections, like, every five minutes they come out to suck your shit. I'd rather be playing a hentai game. I wish buying ammo and health injectors was faster. You have to buy them one at a time and it can take a few minutes to get the amount you want. Overall, the gameplay? Balls blue. The story starts with Jacob, a space trucker man delivering some cargo out of Black Iron Prison located on Callisto, one of Jupiter's moons, with his buddy Max. Some terrorists by the name of the Outer Way board the ship and they crash back to Callisto, killing Max. Captain Ferris of Black Iron comes to rescue Jacob and capture the terrorists, but for some reason the warden radios him to also capture Jacob. Jacob and Danny, the terrorist woman, get thrown in jail. Jacob gets a cute little health bar attached and a nightmare sequence starts with this weird cube thing and gets jump scared awake by Max. The prison is now in riot mode with prisoners breaking out and these weird pimple men everywhere. Jacob meets Elias, a fellow inmate, and they work together to try and escape this nightmare and figure out what's going on. The story was intriguing enough to get me through, but it left me wanting more. This feels like a part one of a trilogy with the cliffhanger ending and all that. If you don't want spoilers, skip to this timestamp. Okay, so Jacob and Elias work together to bust their nuts out of prison. They had to split up and Jacob had to go through the sewers and it's disgusting and full of shit. The bros eventually get back together but Ferris returns from getting jumped by Pimpleman, looking all grey, and vacuums up Elias, killing him. Elias is the first character to help Jacob escape the prison and he did a lot for Jacob, from showing him the way and even giving him the shift that he uses for backstabs and getting out of QTEs. Elias was arrested for defending himself in a fight and presumably mistaken for starting it. Jacob blames Elias' arrest on bad luck but Elias says it's a result of his choices in life that led him to that moment. He thought it was bad luck too but he realized that he can't run away from what he's done in life and accepted it. Presumably that fight was started because he was involved with the wrong people before. This relates to Jacob's story arc. Over the course of the game, Jacob keeps saying to himself that he doesn't belong in this prison and that it's a mistake. Jacob teams up with Danny later on to attempt to escape, but the warden shoots their escape ship and they end up in an old mining colony underneath Black Iron Prison. The miners dug up this huge alien thing with some shit called the Biophage inside it that accelerates evolution. The Biophage was then tested by Warden Cole's scientists on Europa, which resulted in a bunch of people dying from it being a tainted sample. Later, Jacob finds out that connecting to Danny's core device, that's the health bar that's also a memory storage device, Danny's sister died on Europa and she wants to know the truth and get revenge on the people who started it. Throughout the game, you can see Jacob's trucker pal, Max, pop out sometimes to twist his nipples and make him smell his breath, telling him that he can't keep running away. Near the end, we find out why Max has been haunting him. The cargo they were delivering from Black Iron to Europa is actually the Biophage virus, so they're indirectly responsible for what happened on Europa, causing Danny's sister's death. Jacob actually found the virus in one of the cargo cases before delivering, but decided to ignore it. It's kinda goofy how he doesn't remember that until the end, like he has selective amnesia or some shit though. After discovering the big alien head, Jacob grabs a sample of Biophage, fights guardman Ferris who's all grey and nasty and shit, Danny gets deep throated infecting her with Biophage, and they get captured by robots. Dr. Mahler, the one who installed the health bar, decides to help Jacob and Danny. She says that she can cure Danny if Jacob can get a sample of the warden's alpha's blood, the alpha being Ferris. Mahler is doing this to atone for all the inhumane experiments that she has done, hoping to help Jacob and Danny off of Callisto to expose what happened at Black Iron. Together with Danny, Jacob makes his way to Warden Cole at a Zoom meeting with his rich friends in masks, who probably pays a lot of money for Lolly Hentai. It looks like they're a part of a survival cult of sorts, and with the story formerly being in the Player Unknown's Battlegrounds universe, it kinda makes sense. Cole justifies the use of Biophage as a means of evolution, stating that the human body is not fit for space. Jacob fights Ferris again and then a bigger, more disgusting version of him, take his blood and cure Danny. Cole fucks off and Jacob runs with Danny to the escape pods. Only one escape pod is available however, so Jacob pushes Danny in it along with a sample of the Biophage and off she goes. 
Because Jacob connected with Danny's core earlier, she now knows everything he knows and are able to expose Cole's cult. Jacob stays behind to fight the monsters, buying time for Danny to escape. At the end, Mulder shows up in a hologram form to inform Jacob of a way to escape. We get a Ferris jump scare and that's it. I think this story is good, albeit simple. It's about a dude being thrown into prison thinking, I don't belong here. And at the end, he's like, oh shit, I do belong here. Not the deepest thing in the world, but I thought it was well presented. There are some iconic looking imagery at points, and that really helped me push forward when the gameplay didn't. I would've liked to see more of the villains. They didn't show themselves until the end, and they're gone within a few minutes. That cliffhanger ending didn't help the story at all, but at least I still want to see more of it. Not the DLC though. That shit's whack. Final Transmission is the one and only story DLC for Callisto Protocol. After the Ferris jump scare, Jacob wakes up somewhere. Dr. Mahler told Jacob in the ending that she found a way out, so he follows her instructions to escape. This DLC serves as Mahler's side of the story. You can find audio logs with Mahler explaining what she was doing with the Biophage. While the Warden tested the Biophage on human subjects, Mahler went the synthetic route and used the prison security bots, which turned into these fleshy looking Biobot shits, which is cool. Later on, your stun baton breaks and you upgrade to this big hammer so you can kill the Biobots better. Again, pretty cool. What's not cool, however, is actually fighting the Biobots. They can come electricity when you dodge their attacks sometimes, and it's not clear when they do it. Like, after dodging all of the attacks, you think it's time to go in for some hits, but they start charging and you barely have enough time to get away because after you hit it, it takes a couple of seconds to recover. If there's gonna be a patch in the future, please make them charge a bit slower. The environments don't seem to be anything new. It's mostly just recycled assets from the base game but remixed a bit. Anyway, shit gets weird. At a certain point, hallways keep looping, weird messages, graffiti on the walls and floor. It's clear that this is all in Jacob's head. Jacob finds Mahler in the lava room, but she gets hentied and dipped in lava, and later, he fights and kills her in a boss battle. Jacob leaves the lava room and immediately ends up in his ship, and he escapes, living happily ever after. The end. Except not really. In the ending of the base game, Jacob actually got wrecked pretty hard, leaving only his upper body intact. Mahler dragged him to her lab to upload additional data into his core to transmit to Danny for more proof against Cole and his cult. After this final transmission, the lab collapses, presumably killing Mahler and Jacob, but at least the truth is out there now. The end. This DLC is not good. It's 2 hours of gameplay for $15 and the story is very inconsequential. You get to play with a hammer and kill biobots, and you get some audio logs about Mahler's research, but none of it really changes or advances the story in any way. If you stitched the ending of the base game with the ending of the DLC, you would get the exact experience that you would have spending 2 hours playing this thing. It's really disappointing. It's like playing the original Super Mario Bros. 2 straight after Super Mario Bros. 1. There's some new elements, but it's largely inconsequential. Next up is Riot Mode. This is basically a horde mode like Mercenaries from Resident Evil or COD Zombies. You start in a room where you can select modifiers for your run, and out the door you go to whack some space zombies. You kill zombies, get points for upgrades, activate traps, and kill more zombies. It's kind of fun, but there's not much else to say. There's one problem. It's $10! $10 for a game mode with one map and a couple of skins. It's outrageous. RE4's Mercenaries has four different maps, five different characters, and if you master it, you get a cool bonus weapon for the campaign. Riot Mode has a fraction of what the Mercenaries offers back in 2005 and for $10. How is this possible? Uncle Glenn, who did this? As for the other DLCs, they're not much better. The other way skin collection is well, skins, for $5. The Contagion bundle has more skins, adds new death animations, and Contagion mode, which is just a harder difficulty that what I imagine to be just changes to a few lines of code for $10. So again, you're paying for the art. Where's the gameplay, man? This comes back to the issue of all visuals, no gameplay. Uncle Glenn knows horror and his team knows visuals, but when it comes to making the game deep and have the game modes connect in a meaningful way, it's ready ballsack, bro. 
I want to cry. I spent over a hundred dollars on Callisto Protocol because I believed in Uncle Glenn, but it looks like I shouldn't have believed in his team as much. The performance is inconsistent, but the visual and audio department is awesome. The gameplay is so simple and lacking in so many aspects that it makes Dead Space from 2008 look like a quadruple A game by comparison. The story is interesting, but it feels like the beginning of something grander rather than its own thing. My dick got hard just for it to get flattened by a bulldozer. I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. I still have hope for Uncle Glenn and his team. I don't want them to live on the streets, but they gotta get their shit together. If there's ever a Callisto Protocol 2, let's hope that it's more like Dead Space 2 rather than Callisto Protocol. Thanks for watching, see you whenever the next one is. Later.